Cool. So, while we wait for anyone else to arrive, this is our last lecture. Oh, oh no. Uh, we will have a workshop on Friday. And on Friday, we're going to ask, I'll put some information on Slack. It won't be the standard workshop. All we're going to try and do is get you to spin up an Amazon machine and have a go with Sparkly R. So you will need to go and log in. Did anyone get any emails today from Ronin saying, I've added you all as users, and I'm not sure if it lets you know or not. But you're going to log into a thing called Ronin. Once you get to Ronin, you should see the project for Advanced Data Science. If you don't, I need to know about it. Also, you need to go and get the Ronin link. But I will send that, I'll put that information on Slack. And then hopefully what we'll do on Friday is I will just work you through spinning up a machine. And if we spin up the right machines and we get it going, you should see some code that actually does some analysis using what we call Spark R. So the map reduce stuff already built in. You've broken your pen, haven't you? No, it's fiddly. Yeah. Um, so that's about it. Um, you have an assignment due on Friday. Remember, all the instructions are there. That'll be fine. Well, this round was an upset, wasn't it? We, I, was saying, I don't know. I was saying on Friday, I'll ask him an easy one to tip. Shocking. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. How does North Melbourne beat, I think it was Richmond, it was like number two versus 15 on the ladder, and they won? Well, let me, I've been practicing this. Seriously? Wow. No, North Melbourne? Have you seen our team crowd? Uh, yes. <laughs> All I can see is Moss talking about Arsenal right now. Yeah. You see the problem is... Yeah, it's your problem. It was, was going for two arse, wasn't it? Going for two arse. Go. He, le he left it in the net. He left it in the net. No, Can't no, believe he's it. He's trying to walk it in. Anyway, um, so first of all, by the way, you all really impressed um, the domain experts. When I went and had coffee with them so we could finalise the scores, there was a lot of, oh my god, they're really amazing. So, well done. That's good. So, today we're going to do revision. So, to do the revision, we're going to do it with a mind map. So, we're going to do revision today. I want you to start amongst yourselves shouting out what's in this course and we will basically build a mind map so you can see the connections. And now it's all been one big story of connections. The idea of this is then once you see the connections you know what to look for when you start doing your revision. So I hope it gives you a guide. So there, I've started it for you. It says ADS 2019 for Advanced Data Science 2019. So, what was this course about? Bootstrapping. We've already got a bootstrap in there. That was a quick one. What are you making this in? Mind node. It's the one I use for doing mind mapping stuff out when I'm designing courses, etc. Yeah, it's cool. So what else did we do? I've obviously spelled bootstrapping wrong there, but that's alright. That's bootstrapping. What else did we do? You were here, you were all here, I've said you feel regularly. Carts. Carts. What about cart? Random forests. Random forests. Bagging. 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 Sure, sure, they're, they're subsets of cart. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that these go together. Oh, I see that, see that, that's, that's Ooh, okay. Nicely done. Yeah. So what else? Boosting. Where's boosting going to go? Go. But are those specific to current or could you apply them on other websites? Nice. So perhaps we should just have a thing that says, um, I mean, what could we call that sort of category? Gams. Well, not really gams. You're saying that boosting and bagging are more methods, aren't they? Yeah. So they're not individual methods, they're sort of modifications. So you're saying bagging, boosting, and we also found that with this one, you said there's a link between that and cart. Cool. 
and also boosting. There's a link between that and the cart. Nice. Do you need them to be additive to do the boosting? How do you mean additive? Well, like your like energy progression things. So you can actually add models together, I suppose, but you can just add predictions. I mean, when you're doing boosting and bagging, mm -hmm. um, uh, well, I mean, boosting, you're just taking your model and you're slightly improving it and adding the prediction. So as long as you can add predictions to some extent, it's okay. fine. What else have we done? I mean, do we have any more general forms that we should think about? So what's, so for example, when it comes to models, how do we classify our models? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> so you've got classification. And regression. So what do you mean by regression? You're predicting a continuous variable. Yep. And classification? It's some sort of category. Yeah. Cool. So you can start thinking about, you've got your carts, carts are a mixture of both, you've got your bootstrapping, a mixture of both. What other methods have we done? So what's logistic regression then? Because you just said regression is continuous. It does classification. It's a classification. So it's actually a, so regression can mean more than one thing. In this course, we classified our models as regression, if they have a continuous random variable and classification if they have a categorical random variable as their response. But regression also means the concept of having a linear type model. And why didn't statisticians come up with two different words? So I must admit, even though I've been using regression models in this course, I'm trying to be careful that I always afterwards go, and by that I mean, so sometimes people will assume that when you talk about regression, you're not talking about a continuous response variable, you're talking about the regression, as, and often they just think linear regression. Linear regression? Linear regression. Woo! So we should actually at this point have methods that we've done, and we've got our car, we've got our bootstrapping, we've just had someone mention linear regression. And you want me to put in logistic? Fuck okay, it, why not? <laughs> I really like it, mate. It's a really cool program. Yeah. What else? Oh, we should have model selection. That's another subject. So, where are we going to have that? We can have, we've got modifications. We could also have sort of, I've been calling it tuning. I mainly call it tuning because it actually hates that phrase. But tuning, you've got things like model selection. CV, short for? Cost validation. Well, well done. Good save. <laughs> Step. So you've got sort of, well, you've got the whole sort of, I suppose, step, and we can go forward. Back in both. Back. Both. Yeah. If we're going to do tuning, what else do we need? Um, we've got all the metrics. All the metrics. metrics. Nice. AIC, BIC, CP. What else? AIC. B I C Mallows. A I C C What's the metric when you're doing cross validation? Oh. Remember a lot of the time we're looking at mean uh, square error. error. Yeah. And then for that you've got your cross validation mean square error. Don't forget you've got your train and your test. And the idea thing is we're trying to estimate our test. Classification, how do we do measurements in classification? Just classification rate. Yep, so we've got misclassification classification rate. What other ones did we have? Ooh, that's good. Look at RIC curves. RIC curves is a very nice thing to discuss. It was three that my parent put out though. Oh, yeah, cross entropy. Beautiful question that. Here's some data, blah, blah, blah. Calculate the cross entropy. Calculate the Gini. Easy don't. marks. Please don't. Well, let me make a note of that. We run that easy angle, but no question is scribbled out by here. Just large text out. Just scribbed out.
Okay, so um, what else have we done in this course? Well, there's a few more methods, probably. Miles, Maze, Bays, Canis, Davis, PCA, PCR. Oh, well, now PCA is different. I'm just listing the headings from your subsections. Okay. <laughs> That's all I remember. So, PCA, oh, yes. what's PCA? How's PCA different to what we've done so far? Unsupervised. Unsupervised. Yeah. Maybe we should have a split there. So we sort of want a, what, on its own little thing? No, I think it's part of methods. Under, so under, under methods. methods, right? So under methods. You just shut it off. So we could also have a supervised. And what do we mean by supervised? You have a fixed responsibility. Well, you, you know the truth to some extent, don't you? Um, is that, well, you're testing a hypothesis, right? I don't know if you know the truth, do you? What I mean by that is, in unsupervised, all you have is the predictors. In supervised, you have a training data that has the predictors and the response variable. And you're elucidating the relationship between the two. Yeah. Okay, since we've already started unsupervised, what other unsupervised did we do? Clustering. And with clustering, we did the hierarchical clustering. And what was the other thing we did in that lecture? Taking data, putting it into groups. MDS. MDS is another one, but the one I was thinking of is K-means. Well, that's not unsupervised, is it? Let me just put in the MDS. So up here, you said we had LDA. QDA, we've already had naive bays mentioned. Yeah. And SVM is supervised always. SVM is supervised. And all these, remember, are classification. How else can we differentiate models? We've got the sort of, we've talked about the classification versus regression type problems. We've talked about unsupervised versus supervised type problems. What other things do we use to sort of talk about models? Prediction versus explanation. Prediction versus explanation. So we can have this as up here. We've got types, but we also could have prediction, explanation. What else have we talked about? There's a key concept really early on. We'll call this foundational that we talked about. Bias, bias, variance, trade-off. Trade trade so if you've got foundations, so you've got the bias variance trade-off. And remember that's often about, you're going to talk about types, flexibility. So that's like the ability for the model to take different kinds of predictors. Flexibility is... Um, not different types of predictors. Certain models are very flexible. And by flexible, they can fit the data almost perfectly. What's the problem with fitting the data too perfectly? Overfitting. Overfitting, never foundational. So you've got overfitting. What else? The other thing we've been doing as well is we've got what I call tools of the trade workshops. What were our workshops on? CPT. Packages. R and other things. Pardon? R shiny. We did do shiny. Other things we did. What? S3. 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 Data yeah, maps. They're called functionals. And then soon to be Spike VR. Oh, yeah, Spike Slash MapReduce, which is also another method. But, <coughs> yeah. We did Big Data, we did MapReduce. And data tables go there too, surely. What else did we do? Oh, uh, scaling, the model density, no? No, that's, we've already got that. No, big data. What was the other thing we did this time last week? 
We did map reduce. We did distributed file systems. We did data table and we did hash functions. And the key idea of key value pairs, which is a fundamental data type. Everything that you've seen up to this point has been rectangular data. Once you get to map reduce, it's all about key value and representing it that way. What else have we done? Yes, lines of supervised. Supervised? Sure. What site of supervised when we did that? Was in all of the GAMI stuff, that's right. It's all almost in the non-linear stuff. So we did, in the non-linear, we did splines, piecewise cubics, etc. natural splines. So you've got your um, piecewise cubics. And also we did natural splines. Cool. So we could take our linear regression, we can expand it. You've got ridge, lasso. What else? Really is such a cool program. You haven't even seen when we're going to start changing the colors. Oh, yeah. Let's have a theme. There you are. There isn't a pirate theme. I go delight. You want delight? Yeah, third one. Third one in the white area. There's, there's tropical, that's for the pirates, right? True. Candyland? Oh, Candyland. So Candyland. Not at all the pirate. <laughs> what do you mean? Tell me the pirates are having. Blackboard! Let's make it real maths. There you are. That's horrible. We'll stop that. <laughs> Love that so much. <laughs> Let's go tropical. There you are. Yeah. Cool. Oh, let's see. I think we were doing the outside. I don't know. Um, this is actually pretty close to all the various things that we did. <coughs> Bless you. What so? What was EM? No, <laughs> it was the EM algorithm, expectation maximization. Where does it fit? Supervised. Unsupervised. Well done. It's the thing that gave John a nightmare. Yeah, it still does. Doing it before I came here. I hate the EM algorithm. Anything we're missing? Did we do anything else in June? I feel like we might have, but I can't think of where it was. Did cross validation? What are the different sorts of cross validation? Okay, uh, leave one out. Cross validation. I think that was about it. We did the one where you just take your data set out at the start. So you just do your partition. So what was the thing? The oversampling, or is that is that all in the thing where you like take a random sample of your sample and you end up with two thirds of the stuff? Bootstrap. The bootstrap. And also, we it came back again when we were doing uh, support vector machines and some of the other ones. We had that what we call out of the bag. So O B. Not not sorry, random forest. Which was the sort of bag. Out of, out of where, where, where is my, there's my first. Out of the bag. Yeah. So that concept that, you know, because you're doing a, if you think about random forest, you're doing a two step process. You're doing, and um, first of all, you randomly sample your observations, so you bootstrap, but then you take a small subset of your predictors in each cut. Yeah. The, and you know that roughly when you do a bootstrap of the same size of the population, you will get about two thirds of the observations will be in the sample and one third won't. Why did we do the thing in random forest where you just take a subset of? 
the predictors at each cut. To remove that two thirds correlation problem. It's to decorrelate your trees. See, like you said it much better, but the principles are there. Yeah, no, you got it right. <laughs> you got it very right. I just don't have the sort of finesse of you. So when you look at all their methods, what do you need to know about each method? Yes, yeah, so you've got your classification. What else do you need to know about your methods? What kind of data do you need it on? What the scenarios you need it on? How to do it. How to do it perfectly. You also need to remember how to use the output and interpret the output. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can you make sure it's the regression name because the output's a number. Yeah. Will there still be stars on the internet? Yes, but it ain't going to help you this time. Well, but other than logistic and linear regression, do any other ones actually give you the stars for the significance of things? I can't remember. I don't think Find I don't out. Don't remember anything else. Make sure you're comfortable with using the output from these things. I don't want to do that. We didn't do nearest centroids. We did the with the hierarchical clustering. We were looking at centroids, and we had that algorithm. No, the algorithms, there you go. No, the algorithms. The other thing you should always make sure is you know that sort of the assumptions of the models and as you, you know, when can you use it, when you can't use it, pros, cons, etc. I know you thought that like, you know, this sort of vision would be good for us, but it just shows you how much they're more, how much there is after a But to me, I was like, oh, it was like LDA, QDA, Oh, like trees and yeah, oh, there are other than that. But now it's actually a lot to do. Yeah, <laughs> there is. That. Yeah, there's quite a lot. It's better you realise there's quite a lot now, today, <laughs> than in three weeks' time. Well, right, I've got an exam tomorrow. Have a look. Oh, that's quite a lot. Better go and watch that Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. What else? Is there anything else? I mean, that's looking pretty good. And so what do we conclude? It's like, you just do all of them and hope you get kind of similar results and then you pick one to put in the paper. That's a great question related to the assignment that's coming up soon. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, what would I do? First of all, if I'm within a particular domain area and they have a common thing they use, that's what I would start with. I don't think there's a common thing for point view. No. Next, what do I do? Um, I must admit, nowadays I'm starting, it used to be I'd just use one model and that was it. Nowadays I've started to use more and more models. Now, also, when you have better wrapper functions, like carrot, etc., it makes it a lot easier to do. Um, I also try and go for the simplest and then build up if the simplest isn't working. Most of the time, a linear regression or a literal regression is what most people understand and they're comfortable with. And the only time I use any other things is if that standard is just isn't doing well. Okay, and so that supervised thing is that that's not in order of simplicity because naive Bayes should be no like almost uh, third, right? Yeah. Li linear logistic Bayes. I mean, I probably and personally my first choice on all these, and even if I'm not going to use it, I still start there is linear regression and logistic regression. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good, I can explain them, most people get them. Then I might do, if I was doing personally classification, the next one I'd quickly do is a support vector machine in a random forest and compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. I very rarely use Mars unless I really saw that when I looked at my data it had this sort of piecewise structure that I wanted to take into account. Um, the non-linears, I use them a lot whenever my data is just looks, and so I use it as a way of tuning the predictors to fit within a linear regression or logistic regression type model. For that. So I see that as data transformation than anything else. Um, PCA I use a lot. Um, a, a mixture of PCA, HC, and KMEs is used a lot for, um, again, that early stage of data transformation feature selection. Um, that's about it. We forgot PCR. PCR. Polymerous chain reaction phase. So you've got PCR, what was the other one? <laughs> Some 
What's PCR that takes into account the actual response variable? Oh, yeah, partial least squares. Partial least squares. Yeah, we did. So we did PCR. Now I did PCR. You take your predictors, you do a PCA, and then you use them as your predictors into your model. PLS, you're actually doing your PCA so it's actually in line or correlated with your response variable. I do actually remember that. Yeah. Okay. I think it was in week five. So now we've looked at that. Let's actually look at your. Um, so this is actually the spreadsheet of this course. So let's see if we've missed anything. So we had notation, we had that vector calculus right at the start as a warm up. Assessing model accuracy, bias variance, regression models, classification models, RRC, LDA, QDA, naive values, CV. Model selection, ridge regression, lasso, PCR, PLS, polynomial step function. So we've got polynomial, and the way of doing non linearities. Smoothing splines, we've got smoothing splines, Mars, GAN, NLS, decision trees, banking boost to random forest support vectors, PCA clustering, etc. It's not bad, you got most of it. We've got the workshops, remember the workshops are definitely an example. You've got all the assignments, go through the assignments and have a look. So what else do you need to know about the exam? What questions are in it? <laughs> I pretty well told you. First of all, go and look at Gary's exam. That will give you an idea of the sort of theoretical type questions I'm going to ask. Go and also look at the assignments to give you another idea of the theoretical questions we're going to ask. As you're going through the course, look for any things where I went, that's an interesting proof, or anything where I didn't prove it, that's a good thing to ask. You're pretty well guaranteed you're probably going to see something from last year, something from this assignment, something new. Roughly. As for the other part of the thing, I am going to give you some analysis with outputs and you're going to use that to answer questions, so interpretation, etc. There will also be a section which will give you code and you have to understand what that code's doing and what you're expected to do. So that's one question. Hmm. Yeah. Josh did this exact same thing for his course. He was like, there'll be a question on this and on this and on this and it turns out there's a question on every public course. Pretty well. Surprisingly. <laughs> the main difference, and I've tried to say this numerous times, is I don't want people looking at last year's exam and thinking it'd be identical to that. Because one of the things I focused on more is implementation. So I want you I don't want you to walk in and go, I didn't know there'd be R code. How many questions are there? Six. How many R code questions? One and a half. Less than six. Two, all right, one of them is going to be, there it is, <laughs> output from a PCA with a plot and a bit of interpretation on that, Ooh, and nice. an LDA, just for a little bit of like, a bit of prediction, mm -hmm. sort of like, what is the positive mm -hmm. If I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if you're right with that, you're not the only person who will be surprised in this room. <laughs> That's not the exam I set. Where the <laughs> fuck did that come from? I guess there's no PCA around here, mate. Sorry, sorry. So I assume by now you should all be reasonably good at revising. So I'm not going to go through the spiel of how to revise for courses. If you're not good at this by now, then this isn't the moment to discover. I've that thing. The mind map? Absolutely, if you think it's useful, I'll export it as a PDF. Can you show us what else that program can do? Any like other like cool tricks? I really, the way like, you just drag them and put them in different places is really, really cool. That's about it. It's purely, you can do new nodes, I think. What else can you, you can put pictures in. We oh. could have done a pretty picture to represent. So you can put photos in there. You can also, you with, your, yourself with your webcam. 
and then put it in the middle? <laughs> I could. I absolutely could. But it's not going to happen, is it? I can tell you now. You've got various styles you can change. You can change your branch types. There you are. There is a nice picture thing. I can't see it now. Where, where, where's the... Um, is it that one? Oh yeah, so we, we could choose a nice picture to represent. Is there a computer? Well, oh, this is the one we want. There you are. There's your picture. Alright, the tuning's got to be a musical instrument, obviously. Tuning's got to be a musical instrument. Okay, let's find a musical a instrument. Can you use that one? There you are. Surely it's advised like a teacher or like an authoritative figure. An authoritative figure. Now we can get a picture of Jono. Um, <laughs> very authoritative. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just get the person. Yeah, that's my teacher. Uh, you can also add check marks. So you can tick these off as you do them. Mm, I think that's about it. It's generally it's, a really nice interface. I really like that. it's great. I use it for for designing courses. I don't Can you know what your one for this exact course looks like as well. Yeah, um, I can't for this one. I could have got examples in it. <laughs> but I can show you the one I've done for. Um, so here's I did a review of for Lewis. This is Sam Shmi and R for DS. Yeah. What's R for DS? Uh, the book, oh, Art for Data Science. Um, I also have done... This was actually, this was the very early ADS one, but again, I'm not going to show it you. Um, that's when I was going on holiday. I'm not showing you my holiday. That's actually really clever doing it on holiday. Because I want to go to, you know, the, the Lake, Lake District or something, and then from there, like, what you want to do. You have activities and things you got to do and planning and stuff like that. You have to meet your family, you got to organize that together. Yeah. Um, enough. Uh, this is the data science undergraduate course that I'm hoping to do. Very similar. Very, very similar. Very control, that would be, that's good. Yeah, so that's under tools of the trade. Because I can't, I don't think RCPP and stuff like that would be too much for undergraduates. But some basic version control, data wrangling functions, the sort of tidy models verse. Probably not the same thing, really, surely. Yeah, but I've got things like logistics in here. So I'd like a practical exam and a written exam. But we've got to work out the logistics of that. Um, and then the only other one, um, we did have one which was. Okay, no, next year. Enough R. Uh, that's Enough R. Uh, that was a book, stuff that we were working on, me and Lewis. That's, that's some nice connection lines. Yeah, because on the. This is a book I want to write called Enough R to be Dangerous, and this is called Sufficient Stats to be Safe. That exists already, if that one exists. No, 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 we were thinking about, and then it ended up being one of the MOOCs that Lewis and me did. So on this side you get them actually doing stuff, and on this side you sort of, or vice versa. I think this is, well, sort of, that's the theory, that's the sessions, so it sort of matches across. Very cool. So we were planning. That good fun. It's all the important art things. And this is only at a very basic level, yeah. but this obviously also, when I created Shmi, was in the back of my mind when I'm doing that. But it sets you up for a lot of the more popular things, like you've got. Yeah. So that's it. John, you remember how in Shmi you went through an exam and you go, oh, this would be more of an advanced question? Yeah. This would be, yeah, can you do that? Um, no, not really, because they're written by, um, the exam's written by Gary, so use it, but I don't have, it's hard for me to go through and say advanced core when it's not my exam, I don't know how it breaks down, 
I've put the exam up, it's on the web page. I've put up the set of solutions that Gary gave me, they're on there. Um, at this point, it's on us. It's all to some extent going to be advanced. You know, that's. You know, it will be a hard exam. I don't know if it'd be your hardest exam, I don't know. I think uh, Gary's going to take that on. You doing a Gary course? Oh yeah, Bayes now. Oh fuck, now you're fucked. That was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, but um, but um, no, I think Josh will be a pretty solid exam, but you no surprises. As I said today in our meeting, I think my exam is the worst one for you because we don't know what to expect because I don't know if I'll get the level right because it's the first time I've done honours. Or Josh. If everyone gets it wrong, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Cool. Apart from emotions. And friendships may never revealed. <laughs> we never had friendships, don't worry. I just like to come to think of you as people who are in this room. Underlings. <laughs> Underlings, yes. Like wildlings, but lesser. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> Hence less, the underling. You're lesser folk. <laughs> cool. So we'll call it quits there. I will put the mind map up. I will tell you the stuff for the workshop. Um, as for exam consulting, I'm not going to have exact times. You all know where my office is. I will be around just come and ask questions. Yeah, I know you'll be there daily. Yeah. Um, <laughs> usual stuff, you know. Make sure you revise, read through the stuff. You're all honest by now. I don't have to do the spiel of how to do courses. You should know it. At least 20 of them, surely. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Remember, if one question is too hard for everyone, we normalize to make sure it's not too hard for everyone, so don't panic. Although, if you find it really, really hard and everyone else finds it really, really easy, then you're fucked. I'm not fully for your crying wolf. It's bad enough with the A, whatever one you did in Amzi. With your, oh no, there's a wolf, there's a wolf, there's a wolf, there's a wolf, there's definitely a wolf, Mr. Chick, there's a wolf, there's a wolf. What did you get? 81%? Not a fucking wolf then. Because you would have been so happy that got 50. Oh no, it would be a fail to me. <laughs> Absolute fail. <laughs> Told you my lowest mark was 90. In honours or in uni? In all of it. Oh, I, I, Ever. I, I can bet that. <laughs> I wasn't a great student in first year. I wasn't a great student in my first degree, it's probably the best thing to say. Second degree, if I wasn't working hard, sure I could go and that. yeah, I could go and work hard. No. And I got very, very good at exams. And I have a very, very good memory. Probably developed through your degree. Yeah. So cool. Good luck everyone, I will see you on Friday. If you have any questions, please feel free as always to come and see me.